All right, so I got a phone call from a customer who asked to return a micro pump. Mm. So one thing I want to point out is that before we just automatically return a micro pump to the factory for evaluation, mm -hmm. we need to find out what the detail is with what the um, perceived fault is. So I got a photograph of it, uh -huh. found out that the problem was that there was a broken tab off the motor housing. Oh, I see that. Right. What I know is that Burr Process can make this modification without involving micro pump and transit time and cost. So I contacted nice. Senator Charlson and she had supplied me with a replacement housing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take the uh, this pump apart and replace that housing and it'll give us all an opportunity to see what's inside and how they, how they go together. That's great. So this is one of our OEM pumps uh, and we do value add steps to this. So what do we do? We take the three foot cable and trim it to the length that they uh, have specified mm -hmm. and we provide the Molex cable that the customer has specified and we shrink wrap it. Can you see all that? That does right? Matter. We also provide the stainless steel inlet and discharge fittings and we provide a uh, leak test mm -hmm. after, we after we put those together. So let me take this apart and show you how we... Uh, we also provide the custom bracket that you see. So, took the two screws out, did the quarter turn, now you can remove the pump body from the drive. Notice the gasket that seals up against the face of the drive. Great. Okay. So, one thing to note, when you pull the pump out of the uh, drive housing, the coil is floating in there. So if a customer ever calls and says, hey, when I pull the pump head out and the coil came with it, it's supposed to. Okay, good. It's important to know that because in many other drives, right, that's stationary. You think, wow, if there's a moving part, that's a problem. This is not a problem. And this is how it's built. So you can see how the guts come. Right, so the only thing that uh, attaches is this cable. Attach that circuit board there. Yep. So I'm going to wiggle this off, right? So that's really, that's the, that's cable, the, the cable attached here. Exactly. This little cable, huh? Yep. Yeah. Plenty of room to do it by hand, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. We can do this ourselves. So now I'm going to need to take this cable assembly out of the broken housing and then reinstall it in that housing. So let's see if we can do that. Okay. Ah, I see. So I just need to pull this through. The hole, the hole's big enough on there, even for our, our connector. And so we're going to do away with that, right? Thank you. Yeah. We're going to take this new empty housing. Uh, Want to note that there's a little ridge right there, yeah. and there is a mating ridge that matches up with the drive. Let's take a look at that. Oh yeah, there it is. And you'll see it when we put it back together. So let's put this in. Okay. So the cable is reattached to the housing. Now we need to put this back on. Kind of like a USB. Clips right in there. Right? Clips in. We're going to line up that slot with the ridge and the motor casing. Right? So now it's all put back together. Again, you can see that it floats. It's supposed to float for the time being. That will get uh, attached to the pump when we screw it together. Now, again, I want to point out that there's a gasket here. So when you rebuild these, when you assemble them in the field, uh, you may have a spare gasket. If you apply this gasket to the face of the plate, it's critical that you apply the key lube just to provide some lubrication on the face of that gasket. If you don't provide that lubrication, they will not push into place and quarter turn and lock. I've done it, I've experienced it with a customer. So make sure that you have a little key lube on there. You'll see it'll lock into place now. Then all I have to do is screw that back into place. Two screws. Once we've done, once we've pushed it in place, Make sure the lube is on there so it'll turn as it's supposed to, so it's locked behind these tabs. And then these two screws will fix that floating electronic assembly in the back. So this is now set to go. The only other step that we'll have to do is put the two screws in 
to mount it and that will be the customer's end assembly prepared.